Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Subhash Mishra and today's topic of discussion is correlation. Before we start, if you are new to my channel, please subscribe, like, share and turn on the notification bell so that you will be notified whenever any new video gets uploaded. I am constantly uploading videos on machine learning and data science. Now let's get started. Now before we start about the correlation, we have already covered a topic about covariance where we are being able to understand that if we have two features like one feature is x another one is y we can be able to understand the relationship between both of them okay whether they are positive relation and co negative relation we can be able to find out using the covariance so if you are being able to find out the relationship between two variables using covariance then what is the use of this correlation so in covariance one of the drawback is we know that they are positively or negatively related two features two or three features but we don't know how much positive or how much negative the correlation is or the how much the strength of the positive or the negative correlation so to find out that thing only we are calculating the correlation so here we usually find out a correlation coefficient which gives us a relationship between x and y as a value it tells us that if they are positively and negatively correlated then how much positive and how much negative the correlation so the correlation coefficient can range between minus 1 to 1 if the coefficient value is between 0 to 1 then we have a positive correlation if the value is minus 1 to 0 then we have a negative correlation for example if a correlation coefficient value is around 0 0.8 or 0 0.9 then those two variables have a positive but very high correlation means unit change in x will significantly impact the y means if we change the value of x by one unit then the value of y will change by 0.9 units if we have the correlation coefficient as plus 0.9 okay so there are couple of ways of finding out the correlation coefficient one is Pearson coefficient another one is Spearman's rank correlation if we have linear data uh, I mean if we have two features and the features have a linear relationship then Pearson coefficient is a very very important technique to find out the correlation coefficient if we have the data which is non-linear relationship then the Spearman's rank correlation data is more effective let's discuss one by one to discuss the Pearson coefficient we have a formula which is very simple which is like covariance divided by standard deviation of x into standard deviation of y Based on that, we can be able to find out the Pearson coefficient. So let's take an example. If we have two variables like x and y, and we have these three data points. So here by looks of it, we can be able to understand that the three data points are in a straight line. So if we draw a straight line, all of these three data points will fall at the on the line. That means the x and y have a positive and very high correlation means with if we change x by one unit then y will change or y will have a positive change in one unit that means the correlation is plus one okay now let's take another one example here we have also the data points in this way here also the data points are forming a straight line a best fitted straight line but here there is a difference with every unit change in x impacts the y in a negative way if we uh, decrease the value of x by one unit then the value of y will increase by one unit and vice versa so here the x and y have a negative correlation which is pretty much straightforward as minus one now let's take the third example where we have points in this way okay so here all of the points are not forming any straight lines but we can have a best fitted line if we have a best fitted line these three points are actually falling on the line and these three points are having a bit of distance from the best fitted line so here these three points are having least number of distance from the least distance from the best fitted line so here the correlation is like with unit change in x in positive direction has an impact of y on unit cha on change in positive direction also but we don't know how much okay so 
that is not exactly the plus one okay so here it can range between definitely greater than zero but less than one so it will somewhere between zero to one but not exactly zero or one now let's take another one example here let's say we have these kind of data points available over here now if we find out the best fitted line these three points will actually intersect the best fitted line and all of these three rest of the three points are away from the best fitted line but they have least distance from the best fitted line now here with unit change in x in a negative direction has a positive change in y so it is negatively correlated but it is not exactly minus 1 it is basically between 0 to minus 1 now let's take another one final example in which we have data points in a scattered manner so we cannot be able to draw any best fitted line for this based on that we can be able to say if we don't have any relationship plot between x and y then the correlation between x and y is zero because here we have all the scenarios like if increase in x has a positive impact on y increase in x has a negative impact on y we have both the scenario so that's the reason why the correlation is zero so this is how we can be able to calculate the pearson correlation coefficient now let's understand the spearman's rank correlation coefficient to calculate the spearman's rank correlation coefficient we are in the wikipedia phase it's a very very good source where we can be able to understand the spearman's rank correlation very easy okay formula for pearson coefficient for correlation coefficient is covariance of x and into covariance of y divided by covariance of x and y divided by standard deviation of x into standard deviation of y here what we do we add a rank part into it a simple ranking part so here what we do is like we find out the covariance of ranking of x and y divided by standard deviation of ranking of x and ranking of y so what is this ranking part this is the only difference that we have okay let's say we have a data set okay here x of y is iq and uh, y of i is hours of tv per week so it is a data set which speaks about uh, the iq of each and every individual who is watching uh, some hours of uh, tv per week based on that we can we are calculating the iq of the people okay. now here first first to find out the rank we sort the value of x of y so once we sort the value of x of y x of i the value was 100 600 uh, and 86 and like that till 110 so 86 is the lowest value and 113 is the highest value so we got it sorted now we give them a rank like 1 2 3 4 5 6 like like that okay then we do another one thing like we sort the y of y and we give them the rank in the way that we did in x of y once we do that then we basically rank the y of i based on the x of i like x of i is already sorted from 1 to 10 here for whichever rank like rank 1 for rank 1 y of i has uh, the value for y of i is 2 which is rank 1 for rank 2 in x of i the value of y i is 20 which is rank 6 so based on that we are sorting it out once that has been done we basically find out the difference between the rank of x of i and rank of y of i so x 1 minus 1 is 0 2 minus 6 is minus 4 and so on we calculate the difference once you do that we then square the distance like minus 4 square of minus 4 is 16 minus square of minus 5 is 25 and so on once we do that the formula says in the uh, in the correlation coefficient is covariance of rank of x rank of y divided by standard deviation of rank of x standard deviation of rank of y and based on that if we derive the equation we find out we uh, do further derivation of the equation we find out that 1 minus 6 of 
summation of d of i square divided by n into n square minus 1. So based on that, if we find out actual correlation coefficient for this using the formula that we have, we find out the correlation coefficient is minus 0.1757. Okay, so this is how we can be able to calculate the Spearman's correlation coefficient. Now, if we go ahead and check in the example for this kind of data sets where we have all the data is available over here and few data points are available over here. For that, the Pearson correlation is 0.67, but the Spearman correlation is 0.8 because these there are some data points over here and there are data points over here. So we don't have any linear relationship between all the data points. For that, the Spearman correlation is pretty much effective over here. So that concludes the discussion about correlation and correlation coefficient. I hope you guys are being able to understand what is uh, Pearson correlation and what is Spearman's rank correlation and where to use which type of technique. Okay, be because these will be useful whenever we will be doing any feature selection technique. Why, how we can be using this feature selection technique. Now, as we can be able to see that here we have the Spearman correlation between X and Y is 0.84. Now let's say we have a data set where we have three data point features like x, y and z. x and y are let's say the independent features and z is the dependent feature. Now based on the analogy we have found out that the relationship between x and y is 0.84 means if we change the value of x by one unit the value of y is changing by 0.84 units so it is having a high correlation that means the x and y are almost similar with 84% of probability we can be able to say 80.84 probability we can be able to say that the x and y are similar almost similar so we will be able to drop either x or y one of them and we can go ahead and consider the calculation for our model basically so this is how we can be able to use the correlation technique for our feature importance calculation Okay, we will be doing a separate session about the feature importance calculation. Until then, stay tuned and enjoy machine learning. Thank you.